What's up guys? We just got out to the public crabbing pier here at the bay. It's me and my friend Dina Beans. Hi. And uh, we're gonna try to do a little crabbing tonight. We're gonna go sit on the stripers for a while, but we figured why not drop some traps in. I got some shad from earlier in the season. So we're gonna throw those shads in the cages, get them out on the docks and uh, let them soak for a bit. See if we can't get a couple of crab to uh, throw on the fire while we chill out uh, fishing tonight. So stay tuned, hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to another adventure of the bite. Guys, what so I'm doing light. right now is I'm chopping up these shad that we caught earlier in the season. And we've used these for striper bait and for crab bait and all kinds of things. You've seen us mess with these fish a little bit before, but they're still frozen solid because I had them in my freezer. So I'm not going to get through them with a knife. And I got this cool little hatchet here. My dad got me when he was in Asia off of the guy who made it. So I just get to hack frozen slabs of fish up. Look, that one had row in it. Nice frozen slab of shad row. Crabs are gonna love that. And I have a cage in there and then I have this bag. I like the bags because I feel like it lets the crabs get in there and chew on the meat a little bit more and actually get to eat something. The other crabs hear them eating something and it really causes them to go a little bit more in a frenzy. Breaks up the meat, causes the scent to go in the water a bit. Where just having one of these cages, these classic cages that, um, um, everybody uses those are great for protecting your bait but I feel like the crabs want to be able to get a little bit know. more in there and so that little bag in there kind of being able to bounce around I'm going to secure it a little bit tighter so that it doesn't just flop all the way around all over the place I'm going to clip it with the spongy cord but that's going to give them something to really chew on once they get in there and they're going to go nuts all right so I got one more of these classic cages like I was saying these are great keep a chunk of bait in there and it's gonna soak for a long time. The crabs will get to chew on it a little bit since the holes in here are big enough for them to get some of their claws in. <laughs> it's okay, Mish, we're gonna wrap it up here and then we're gonna go play. I'm gonna strap that into the bottom of that other cage and then I'm gonna take another one of these little bait bags and just throw the head section in there so that they have something to chew on. Oh, Mija. We're gonna get those soaking for a couple of hours and see if we can't get into some crab. 20 minutes later. All right, you guys, these traps have only been sitting for a few minutes, but we dropped two while we rigged up all of the other ones. And we're gonna just check these two before we go back and chill out for a bit because maybe we could bring a couple of crab home to camp with us. This feels heavy. There's definitely crab in it, but are they gonna be all small and big females? Let's find out. Woo-wee, look at that. That's a lot of crab. You know what I definitely oh, one of them see? just got out. Mish, okay, get back. Get out. The smaller ones get can back. definitely just get out and hop and hop away, which is a good thing, because we kind of want to let them just oh. run and get back into the ocean. <laughs> so this one right here is big female. You can see that's the, the mark of a female. That's the mark of a male, the difference in their bodies. These are both uh, not legal crabs, so they're going back into the ocean. That's a female. This, this is probably just, just barely short. So we're gonna check it and see if it's a keeper. But this one right here, that is a keeper crab for sure. Look at that nice, big, giant, beautiful claws. So that's fun to put a crab away in our first little run. And since I could tell this one's a keeper, I'm gonna say I could tell this one's not. And even if it is, it would just barely, barely, barely be legal. Um, it looks so close to me. I think that we're, we're gonna have to test it. Well, we're gonna have to test it, but I'm betting that one's going back. So all these other little guys are going back for sure. Bye guys. Ooh, but I don't want these ones getting away while I'm doing it. Let's get this one back in the water and go check those crabs to make sure they're legal. Fix this little door. We don't want our door to not swing closed. If our door doesn't shut, then the crab will get out. Now let's get this back in the water. Woo-wee! Yip, yip, -hoo! 
So you guys, we spotted a bunch of little bait fish here along the dock. So I have this little sabiki jig, and it's basically a bunch of little hooks with glow-in-the-dark beads. And I'm going to hit these beads into this flashlight for a second, and it's going to cause them to glow. And I'm going to see if we can't find some of these bait fish. We're killing it crabbing. We've got a ton of crab. Um, we just don't have a whole lot of lighting and it's dark out here so we haven't been filming the whole crabbing process but when we get back to the van we'll uh, show off some of our bounty real quick so hopefully I can't get into a little bit of bait and we can take it up river with us and have a little bit of live bait that would be a lot of fun fishing with live bait is not legal um, in almost any of the bodies of water um, live bait you can use things like live worms or um, live sand shrimp stuff like that but you can't use live crawfish live leeches and you can't use live minnows unless you're using live minnows that were caught in the same water that you're using them for bait in a tidal estuary so if you're fishing like the mouth the saltwater mouth of a river area and you catch the bait right there then in that same body of water you can move around we could go up river we could go down to the jaws and we could use these as live bait and um so having that opportunity, a little bit of like the window where you do get to do it, and then all of a sudden you see some bait fish, it's kind of a fun experience to be able to come down and throw us a beaky jig, fill a little bucket with some, um, some shiners, some sardines, some smelt herring, something like that, and then uh, take them up or down river a little bit and try to get into a fish with them. So that's what I'm going to try to do now. We saw a bunch of fish here earlier, but it doesn't seem like I can't find them right now. The reason you can only use the live bait that you catch in the same waterway that you caught it in is because they don't want these fish bringing parasites um, or you know viruses diseases um, sea lice any of that kind of stuff from one area to another and if we came down in here in the bay and caught some bait fish that had some kind of gnarly um, parasite some kind of worm or something like that and then took them down to a lake nearby and tried to use them to catch bass or something like that there's a good chance that we would bring that parasite over and then give it to that population in that lake and who knows what kind of damage could be done by introducing something that isn't already in that body of water yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. you can see all kinds of cool things there's jellyfish and all kinds of weird stuff underneath the dock here i don't imagine we'll be able to show it to you guys the flashlight that we have with us is really really not that bright our spotlight died so we're gonna get that spotlight charged so we can come down here and show off a little bit more stuff do some more night um, footage we'll probably be out here again tomorrow night but for now, I'm just kind of playing around, and we'll see if we see something cool. If we do find something cool, we'll uh, share with you guys. I got a bright light back at the van, so we'll drag it back there and show off our crab and show off these little bait fish if we get into some. So um, there'll probably be a cut right about now. So we just pulled the traps, and we were over there jigging up, um, trying to get some sardines, trying to get some little bait fish or something like that. And I didn't catch any bait fish. Um, I could see a lot in the bay, but I couldn't get into them. That's kind of been the theme lately, or a repeating um, thing. I've been out here a couple of different times trying to get at some uh, little shiners or something like that just to take out live. But it hasn't really happened. But we cleaned up on crab. We definitely caught our limit, and they're just monsters. Look at the size of this crab right here. Like that is a beast. Uh, state trooper said that's a nine pound crab. I doubt it's nine pounds, but he just came down here and checked our licenses and uh, made sure all of our uh, crabs were legal. And this bad boy is obviously such. So that's pretty cool. But what is really pretty mind boggling and amazing is this surprise uh, catch that I just got. The last time I came down here and fished off the tee, I had a surprise catch. I got this cool surprise salmon. And just now, fishing off of the crab pier at night, I caught a squid. I've been fishing here uh, most of my life. I've never even seen a squid on the Oregon coast. I've definitely never seen one like off the crab pier, but just shining the flashlight down in the water, trying to get into a sardine or into, um, you know, like I was saying, trying to find bait fish. Um, I spotted a squid. I threw the sabiki jig I had at it that has a little glow in the dark bead on it and he went right for it and bam I pulled a little squid up out of the ocean. So um, show you guys that little squid right now. It's super cool. Check this out. So wild you guys. Check this out. I caught a squid. And he's got a little wound right here from like maybe a fish or something. 
you can see his body this side is all still turning those dark wild colors but this side has been staying pretty translucent and you can see like this white sack runs all the way down the center but over here you can see like these different colors and this side it's just totally clear and this this bright black that he does like up in the front like that his whole body will turn that color sometimes but when he's been doing it this side over here hasn't been hasn't been changing that color fully maybe he's got a little injury there and it's real cool he has these two big two big main tentacles out on each side and then he's got a uh, another little eight smaller ones so he actually has eight of these center tentacles right yeah and then these other two that are like arms so he's got ten ten tentacle thingies tentacles? yeah ten ten tentacles and tentacles. he's just a trip super wild yeah and look he's got this injury right here Look at how cool his tentacles are and his eyes. What a wild creature. Well, haven't decided if he's going to be bait or calamari. I'm tempted to eat it, but I'm also thinking that if I threw it out there, I could use him to get into something real big. So um, we'll make those decisions, but never caught a squid in Oregon. Never seen a squid off of the jetty out there, and, and that's just such a trip to catch one right there off the crabbing pier using a sabiki jig. <laughs> He's cool looking. He's not super uh, lively, but he is still alive. Yeah, and I saw him. <clears throat> I was chasing little sardines, and I saw him and went chasing him down, and... Yeah, spot fishing, spot fishing squid with a sabiki jig. With a dying spotlight. With a dying light also. That's real cool. Hopefully we can't get into a fish and hanging out for the night. We got lots of crab though. So either way, it's been a totally successful evening. Calamari and crab. Oh, look at this. There's a little crab of some kind. Oh, is it that same little guy? Yeah, look, there's a little tiny crabby right here. So super, super fun. We're gonna go and set up camp um, up river a little bit and either uh, turn that into bait or to dinner and we're going to uh, get these crabs in a pot and get a little zone set up so stay tuned more fun we're out here for the weekend lots of action to come hope you guys are enjoying this episode of the bite yeah, yeah. on the road again nom, 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 nom. well you guys we had a totally abundant evening crabbing these are monsters these are both you know, over six inches. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, six. We double limited. So we got our 24 crab. Um, we showed up before midnight a couple of hours, fished um, up till midnight, and then fished for a little bit after midnight and pulled our last little bit. And we managed to get a double limit and um, two days limits in only a matter of like three or four hours because we crossed over that midnight threshold. So um, stoked on that and yeah. don't even have to bother just during the regular day tomorrow. We'll probably get Dina her license and Chris and the fam are coming out so we'll catch their limits also. But for tonight we're cooking up 24 crab and uh, Dina just put some garlic butter with a little rosemary together. Um, um, garlic butter and crab is cra classic, you know. But if you want to add a little bit of a um, extra flavor twist to it, throw a little bit of rosemary in there. It brings out the butter, garlic, crab flavor just in a really beautiful way. These are big boys, and I'm going to get them in the pot. Got to mix these crabs. This is like a pretty big crab right here. It makes this crab look small. Ow! Like this crab doesn't even look like a keeper, but I promise you that crab right there is five and three quarters. It just looks all small next to that one that's like six and a half. That's like one nacho, right? Dude, if you get the nachos stuck together, that's one nacho. All right. Crab Good. feast on the river while we're hanging out waiting for stripers. Well, you guys, that's going to be the end of our first evening 
when we got out here tonight it was already like 8 30 nine ish something like that it was getting dark and we just got some crab traps in the water real quick and then we're just kind of playing around after uh letting the traps soak for a while and i caught that squid totally amazing i've caught some squid and some cuttlefish and stuff like that in other parts of the world but never in oregon i know they catch humboldt squid down in california but i've never heard of anyone catching up one up here in this area so um, i thought that was really cool we got a double limit of crabs we were able to show up at like nine limit out by midnight limit out again so i'm looking forward to dina getting her license tomorrow because i'm limited for today and today uh yesterday and today i should say and um you know it's today and tomorrow but really today is tomorrow so and um we're stoked i got two little bait fish in the bucket in the water uh hopefully it'll be alive in the morning i got that squid on ice plenty of different plethora of baits for the morning so i'm gonna pass out right here in bed and probably try to catch the sunrise which is only in like two hours three hours from now i'm sure dina and her doggy mish will be passed out cold but i might be able to go get into a fish early and then i'll probably pass out for a few hours also until chris's fam shows up and all that yada 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 anyways hope you guys have been enjoying it so far stay tuned all kinds of fun action um you're watching the bite